Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about seven things I do every day to support my mitochondria. The mitochondria are the organelles within every cell of your body that produce energy that literally drive the function of the cell. And they're also very responsive to the environment. So if we have a chronic infection, if we have um, bad circadian rhythm, like if we're not sleeping well, if we're under a lot of stress, they actually start to shut down energy production. They actually create more oxidative stress in order to try to protect the cell. And so the mitochondria are incredible little organelles. When we think about the mitochondria within our typical muscle cells, we have somewhere around one to 2,000 mitochondria per cell, right? Amazing. In our brain, we have over 10,000 mitochondria per cell, our brain and our eyes. And in a woman's ovaries, it's something like 50,000 mitochondria per cell. This is amazing. And so the, again, the mitochondria will produce the energy uh, and they help regulate. They're, they're, they're basically um, like a thermostat for the energy. So if they feel like they need to turn down energy, they turn it down. If they need to turn it up, they turn it up. And so if you're dealing with issues like chronic fatigue, if you feel like you're aging faster than you should, if your skin is getting wrinkly, if you're having issues with your vision, with your energy, your performance, your mental function, uh, these things are, they're all related to mitochondrial issues. And so there are things you can do every single day to support your mitochondria. So this is what I do. Number one thing is I really prioritize good sleep. Good sleep is super critical. And for me, I turned 40 this year. And so, you know, when you start to hit 40, definitely, uh, you know, prioritizing mitochondrial functions, even more important. And so good sleep is super critical. So one of the things I do is after the sun goes down, I actually put on blue light blocking glasses like this. And these actually help shield my eyes from blue light. Blue light suppresses your melatonin production. And melatonin is really critical for helping to detoxify brain cells and allow the mitochondria to function optimally. And so I want maximal melatonin production. So I turn, I put on these, I dim our lights around the house. We put on the blue light blocking glasses at night so we can really, uh, my wife does this as well, so that way we can get maximal melatonin secretion. And then at night in our bedroom, we keep the, the, the lights as dark as possible. And then I put on an eye mask. I just put this on over my eyes like this to block out any sort of ambient light that might come in. In fact, a sign of very good healthy circadian rhythms is when you are actually very affected by light. And so it's normal if you have a lot of bright lights on at night to have trouble falling asleep and not get good quality sleep. And then as the sun rises in the morning, even if you have you know, your, your shades down and everything like that, if any light gets in, gets near your body, it's actually natural for that to start to um, cause you to rise, right? Ca cause you to stop sleeping and uh, feel a little bit more energy. It's actually a sign of a really good healthy circadian rhythm. We wanna optimize that. So good sleep habits, super critical. Um, trying to get seven to eight, maybe even nine hours of good quality sleep every single night. And I actually track it on my Aura Ring and I'm actually able to track it on my phone. And you know, I, I really aim for two hours of deep sleep at night and an hour of REM sleep at a minimum, right? Trying to get two hours of deep, one hour of REM. This can be, certainly be tough when you have babies, children, right? I know we have uh, a newborn at this time. Uh, so definitely makes it harder, but uh, you know, that's always what I'm trying to aim for. And, uh, and, and that's a good sign that we're supporting the mitochondria. So really prioritizing sleep, that's number one. Number two is good anti-inflammatory nutrition, particularly a nutrition plan that helps your body get into ketosis from time to time. And you can do that with nutrition. You can also do it with intermittent fasting. So I try not to eat a lot of carbs on many different days, right? And so I, I stay very active, but I also try to keep my carbs under somewhere around, you know, I don't definitely don't go over 100 grams of net carbs a day. And usually I'm more around 50 grams. And my net carbs are typically coming from fruit and vegetables. I do berries, I do non-starchy vegetables, things like that. And I eat a lot of healthy fats and a lot of protein and I stay active and I have good muscle mass. And that helps my body to produce ketones. And ketones tell the cells of our body to produce more mitochondria. So when we are in ketosis, when there's ketones elevated in our bloodstream, 
our body, our cells start producing more healthy, stronger, more stress resilient mitochondria because they need to get better at burning fat for fuel. The mitochondria are where we burn fat for fuel. And so if we want more healthy mitochondria, getting into ketosis from time to time is really important. Now, we don't always wanna necessarily stay in ketosis, so there are times where we can cycle in and out with possibly having a little bit more carbs uh, in a meal, uh, ideally healthy carbs, but we do wanna spend a good amount of time in ketosis, so that's really critical. I have a lot of videos on that that you can check out. And then a practicing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting naturally tells your body to burn fat. Your insulin levels go down, you start burning fat for fuel, and when you do that again, you produce ketones and you turn on mitochondrial biogenesis, the formation of new mitochondria. You also turn up something called mitophagy, where your body actually breaks down the damaged, dysfunctional mitochondria and turns them into newer, healthier, stronger, more stress-resilient mitochondria. So intermittent fasting is great. It also helps the gut, uh, the, your gut microbiome. You have a certain type of bacteria called your Acromansia mucinophilia, which lives in the mucous membrane. It's mucinophilia means mucus loving. So it lives in the, in the mucous membrane. When we intermittent fast, we get an upregulation of this sort of bacteria. And this bacteria actually um, actually form something called urolithins. And urolithins help feed the intestinal cells and they stimulate the mitochondria in the intestinal cells to undergo mitophagy, which is, again is this breakdown of damaged, dysfunctional mitochondria and formation of new mitochondria. And this is critical. We gotta go through this process. All of us um, are accumulating a number of dysfunctional mitochondria and we've gotta actually turn them into healthier mitochondria. This is a continual daily process that we need to go through. And if we go through it effectively, we age effectively and we function at our, at our, at our peak, at our optimal. And if we don't, then we age faster, we don't feel good, we don't look as good, and uh, we start to develop chronic disease. So very, very critical intermittent fasting. I recommend doing something like a minimum 14 hour fast on a daily basis and trying to really push into that 16, maybe even 18 hour zone where we're not eating for 16 to 18 hours, um, you know, at least three days a week, okay? So at least three days a week trying to do that. Um, and then ideally, if you're able to, trying to do a 20 to 24 hour, so like a, uh, you know, one meal a day or a, like a lunch to lunch fast or a dinner to dinner fast one day a week. And that will really ramp up autophagy and turn up the production of new healthy mitochondria. And so that's a great goal, great strategy. Just about everybody can do it. If you're a pregnant or nursing mom, obviously wouldn't recommend it. If you're a high level athlete in season, may not be warranted. Uh, you know, a young child may not be warranted, but for most adults, especially as you're aging, it can be one of the most therapeutic things that you can possibly do is intermittent fasting, 16 to 18 hours, uh, at least three days a week, and then one day a week, 20 to 24 hours, really pushing that fast a little bit longer to ramp up more autophagy. So we talked about sleep, we talked about good nutrition, getting into ketosis, intermittent fasting, three key things that I do. I also try to get in the sun as much as possible. So as I'm recording this video, it's summer, I'm trying to get in the sun every single day, at least 15 minutes of good quality sun exposure. For me, being a man, it's easy, I just take my shirt off, when I'm in the sun, try to get really good quality sun exposure at least 15 minutes every single day in the, in the days when it's not good, like if it's overcast and rainy or in the wintertime when, um, when it's cold out, then I get in front of my red light therapy device. So I actually have a red light therapy dev device that has red light therapy as well as near infrared. And I've done videos on this in the past and I'll link to it uh, in the show notes. But this device stimulates mitochondrial production, particularly in the skin. Uh, the red light will stimulate it more in the skin, which is great for help, healthy collagen production, really stress resilient skin, um, getting rid of you know fine lines and wrinkles and age spots and things like that. But also the infrared will actually penetrate deeper and will stimulate more mitochondrial production in your muscles and your tissues, giving you more energy, more, better mental clarity, uh, better overall health. And so especially, you know, in the wintertime, I use it every single day. And then um, I use it on overcast days when the weather is nice. And so getting sun exposure, again, throughout the day, um, you know, there's an old proverb that says, if you want to have great energy during the day, watch the sun rise. And if you want to sleep well at night, watch the sun set. 
Now, why would that be? Because there's different spectrums of light that come out at sunrise and at sunset. Sunrise, you have a lot of red and, and near infrared light, same thing with sunset. And then during the day, you're getting more of the UVA, UVB, which are more of the vitamin D producing uh, rays that uh, help sterilize, help, help kill pathogens on your skin, and also help stimulate the production of vitamin D. Now, you don't want a lot of UVA, UVB in the evening because that is more energy stimulating and that's not gonna allow you to sleep well. But you can get a little bit of red or near infrared uh, in the evening and that will actually help, help you sleep better. And all of those different forms of light are great for mitochondrial energy production. And so they really help support good mitochondria so red light therapy, getting in the sun on a regular basis. You know, that was number four. Number five is exercise. This is something that I'm doing every day. Um, usually five days a week, I'm doing weightlifting. And I like to run my neighborhood. It's about a mile. So I'll just get out and jog as a warm up. Uh, and that's really all I do really for cardiovascular exercise, uh, other than playing with my kids and, and kind of running my neighborhood, doing about a mile as a warm up. And then I lift weights. Okay, weightlifting is one of the best things you could possibly do for mitochondrial energy production. So I lift weights. On the two days when I do not do intense exercise, I take walks. So I get out, I walk, I play with my kids. Um, even just walking can be great movement. Just getting your body moving, so good for mitochondrial energy production. And I would recommend doing some sort of higher intensity exercise, at least two, ideally three or four days a week. So that would be strength training, like lifting weights um, or doing your body weight, whether you wanna do push-ups or wall push-ups or some squats, things like that, or going out and jogging or um, you know, riding a bike or something like that, that really gets your heart rate up at a higher rate. That is going to give a good stimulus for mitochondrial energy production. So you know, if you're new to exercise, maybe just try two or three days a week in the beginning. Give yourself, you know, at least two days or so between uh, workouts so you have some recovery time, but you're trying to get into a rhythm with this. Really boosting your mitochondria is something that you do on a daily rhythm, a daily and weekly rhythm. So you're doing strategies on a daily, weekly basis to help support this. So that was number five. Number six is trying to keep stress down and taking deep breaths. Right, so just taking like a minute every single hour and taking long, deep belly breaths, right? Taking in more oxygen and exhaling will help stimulate your vagus nerve and, and shut down a little bit of your sympathetic nervous system and get more activation of your parasympathetic nervous system. And that will help create balance in your body so you're not having high production of stress hormones and that will help support your mitochondria. So deep breathing, and there are other breathing exercises, breath holds and things like that. You know, and we can also even throw in like cold and hot exposure. So getting out in the heat, right? In the summertime, get out in the heat. In the wintertime, get out in the cold, right? Get yourself cold, right? Get in a cold shower, right? Turn your shower cold, right? I know it sounds crazy, but doing it cold for 30 to 60 seconds at the end of your shower, one of the best things you can do for stimulating better mitochondrial energy production. You also burn, burn uh, more body fat that way. You stimulate the production of brown fat, which is actually fat tissue that has mitochondria in it, right? That helps support energy production and thermoregulation. So one of the best things you can do every day, when I shower, I turn it on cold. Usually it's cold in the beginning, I get in, and then I turn it on cold for the last 30 to 60 seconds at night, or I'm sorry, at, at the end of the shower uh, to support mitochondrial energy production. I feel great when I do that. And then in the summertime, I try to get out in the heat, you know, play with my kids and stuff like that, get a little sweat going. Exercise, of course, helps with this. And in the wintertime, I also really like to use my infrared sauna. So getting in a sauna or something like that where you could be sweating. A lot of gyms have, you know, steam saunas that you can utilize. You can get an infrared sauna for your house. Great strategy for supporting mitochondrial energy production, detoxifying your body, getting rid of toxins that are built up in our fat cells and stimulating fat burning. So that's number six. Number seven is gonna be my favorite uh, supplement for mitochondrial energy production, and that is Super CoQ10. This is the Dr. Jocker's brand. We have a unique form of ubiquinol. And CoQ10 is really what we need for energy production. It's a powerful antioxidant that protects mitochondrial energy production. And when we're taking in extra CoQ10, it actually sense, tells the mitochondria, hey, things are, we're in a safe and, and healthy environment. We can turn up energy production so you feel better. 
You know, there are a lot of different medications that block coenzyme Q10 production, things like statin or cholesterol lowering medications, um, some different forms of antibiotics, chemotherapy uh, will do this, uh, different types of um, birth control can, can, can impact coenzyme Q10 production, as well as high blood pressure medications. There's just a whole number of different types of medications that block the production of mitochondrial energy production. And so CoQ10, if you're taking any of those medications, you absolutely should be on this. NSAIDs, things like ibuprofen and aspirin, uh, impact the ability of the mitochondria to produce coenzyme Q10. So if you're taking those, you definitely wanna take something like this. And then it just as you age, you know, if you're young, you're healthy, you're 20 years old, you're doing these other lifestyle strategies, you probably don't need something like CoQ10. But if you're up over 40, you wanna really dramatically improve your energy, your brain health, um, follow these strategies and then supplement with a really highly absorbable, powerful form of CoQ10, particularly ubiquinol, which is uh, the activated form of CoQ10. And we actually have a, a unique formulation here. It also has GG Gold in there, which um, is an endogenous mitochondrial enhancer, meaning something that our body naturally produces. You can also find it in certain foods in small quantities like flax seeds, sunflower seeds. Um, but it's basically a tertrapine compound that really helps stimulate mitochondrial energy production. So powerful stuff and, it, and it's been clinically shown to dramatically improve mitochondrial health. So this is something I take one capsule of this with my lunch every single day to give me great energy and mitochondrial health um, and really to support my eyes, my brain, my skin and my energy for optimal health. So check it out. We got a coupon code in the link, Jockers10 that you can use at checkout. Uh, that will save you 10%. We offer free shipping on all orders over $49 in the United States. So check that out. So again, to recap, number one was really prioritizing good sleep. That's probably number most important thing. Number two is really good nutrition. Um, intermittent fasting was number three. Number four was good sun exposure and then also possibly red light therapy. Number five was exercise, getting movement and exercise on a regular basis. Number six was deep breathing and then cold and hot, right? So um, getting some temperature change in there, uh, really powerful. And then number seven is supplement with coenzyme Q10 to support mitochondrial health. There are a lot of other nutrients we could talk about, B vitamins, magnesium, all very important for uh, mitochondrial production, carnitine, alpha lipoic acid, uh, N-acetylcysteine, glutathione boosting agents. However, probably the most important is CoQ10, especially as you're aging, especially if you've been on some of these different medications throughout the course of your life. Uh, so I would recommend that highly. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this training. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, now is the time to do that. Go ahead and do it and hit the bell button. That way you get notified whenever I put up a new video so you never miss one of these important trainings. Thanks so much for doing that. Share this video with a friend or a loved one and we'll see you guys on a future online training. Be blessed.